Earlier this week, Apple held their annual iPhone event where they unveiled the new iPhone. This is the anniversary edition since the iPhone came out originally in 2007, so it's only right that they announced the iPhone X or X, depending on how you want to pronounce it. The iPhone itself houses a beautiful edge-to-edge -edge display, super impressive microprocessor, and a controversial feature which I think is not getting the right attention that it should. Uh, the feature is called Face ID, and it's essentially this 3D scanner that sits on top of the iPhone. And the way this actually works is that there's an infrared projector which projects up to 30,000 dots that are invisible to map out your face and head shape, your heat signature, and not only that, it actually learns what you look like over time. So if you were to grow a beard, uh, wear glasses, a hat, or a scarf, or whatever have you, it's still gonna know that it's you. Now what's even more impressive is that it works in the dark, and the chances of somebody fooling your phone into thinking it's you is actually less than one in a million compared to the fingerprint sensor which was on previous phones, which was about one in 50,000 chance of somebody having a similar fingerprint which is close enough to fool the phone. So this is effectively replacing the fingerprint sensor which we're all accustomed to on older iPhones. Apple also showcased another use for this outside of security and payment, which is what they call and emojis, which is just emojis that map out to your facial features. So you in turn kind of control them using just facial movements. So it's not hard to imagine that in the near future, Apple would open this up to third party developers like we've seen them do with the Touch ID and Siri. And this is where things get really interesting because most people don't realize that your face could be used for a lot more than just verifying your identity. The implications of this technology can range from funny and entertaining to downright scary and concerning. And that's because your face can reveal unimaginable intimate details about you as a person. Marketers are actually already using facial recognition technology to observe consumer reactions by reading micro expressions in real time. And the tech is actually so good that it works in crowds as well. So you can imagine a scenario where a movie director wants to test a certain scene and wants to see if it's funny enough. He can get a focus group of, let's say, 15 to 20 people, sit them in a room, show them the film while he has cameras pointed at them, observing their facial reactions in real time. And that would help them optimize and correct the content to tweak it in such a way that the funny scene is actually a little bit funnier. So there's even more useful applications for this when it comes to healthcare. In the US especially, there is a huge epidemic of doctors overprescribing potentially addictive painkillers to patients. And that's for two reasons. One is that we tend to overreport our pain as opposed to the objective amount of pain we're feeling. We tend to overestimate, and in many cases, people would actually fake that pain to their doctor just to get their hands on the medication. So there's been recently a neural network developed that has been trained to recognize pain just by looking at your face. And the result is a 35% better accuracy than humans. Now this could be used by doctors to prescribe painkillers only when appropriate and not trust patients when they tell them that they need it. And even more fascinating applications of this in the healthcare space come from Oxford University, which has trained an artificial intelligence to be able to predict certain genetic disorders which you may have just by looking at a picture of your face. Now, it only recognizes eight different diseases at the time being, but the way it actually works is that the artificial intelligence has been trained on thousands of people with those disorders, and it tracks 36 facial feature reference points to be able to find a pattern on how these genetic diseases affect your face shape. Something else that was interesting is that they showed the AI a picture of Abraham Lincoln, and it diagnosed him with Marfan syndrome which results in unusually large features. And I think we can all agree if you look at a picture of Lincoln that his facial proportions look a little bit off. And many biographers, I believe as well, have stated that there are some genetic disorders in his family. Anyways, moving on to more sinister and darker uses of this technology, one being fake news. This is a topic that was at the forefront of the discussion after the US elections in 2016. There has been a huge propaganda push to disinform the public and propagate false information. So if it's not already hard enough to distinguish real from fake, this facial mapping technology makes it even harder. There are plenty of experiments that are already showing you what's possible. For example, this video shows Obama speaking from decades ago and the voice along with the facial movements can be transposed onto a current footage of him, making it seem like he's saying that now. For a lot of kids, uh, the doors that have been opened to me aren't open to them. Uh, President Barack Obama. 
when you uh, giving a speech, uh, make sure you use uh, a lot of pauses and speak uh, in a very weird timbre. <laughs> uh, up and down, uh, down and up, 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 down, down. As you can see in these examples, the technology is scarily advanced, producing hyper-realistic footage of these world leaders being manipulated into saying things that they never have before. Which means that video is no longer a reliable source of truth. Okay, so at this point you're probably thinking, these are really far-fetched scenarios and use cases that really would not affect my everyday life. The most I would use this as an iPhone X owner, I'm sorry, iPhone 10 owner, would be uh, Animojis, animating chicken heads, etc. Well, that's not actually true. There is a company which already uses artificial intelligence in tandem with facial recognition to screen job applicants at certain jobs, ranking them against each other and trying to figure out who is the optimal candidate. The company is called HireVue, and it's raised $95 million, and it's already being implemented by Goldman Sachs and Under Armour. So imagine your next job interview being over video chat, and the person interviewing you maybe has a live truth detection meter that he can spot whenever you're lying or you're fabricating a little bit of a story and kind of stretching the truth in some of your prior experience. Personally, I don't know how I feel about it because I definitely see the appeal from an employer standpoint. But on the inverse side of the coin, um, I'm afraid that this over-quantification is reliant on algorithms which may or may not be accurate. And furthermore, those algorithms could be biased based on the training data, so it's very likely that it could misread my neutral expression for anger, and I don't know if I feel comfortable enough going through that interview process just yet. But maybe scariest of all is this new Stanford study that came out earlier this month. Stanford effectively developed an AI gaydar, meaning that they trained this artificial intelligence on the online dating photos of 35,000 people, whether they're gay or straight. The accuracy is surprising. So with just a single image, the AI guessed correctly whether a man was gay 81% of the time, and if a woman was gay 74% of the time. Now, if the AI had access to five images of the same person, that rate goes up to 91% correctly for men and 83% correctly for women. Humans guess correctly whether a man was gay 61% of the time and only 54% of the time for women. But the most fascinating aspect of the study is not the correct guessing rate, it's that the AI detected common facial patterns in gay men and women. And it found out that gay men tended to have narrower jaws longer noses and longer foreheads, and gay women had larger jaws and smaller foreheads. Now these findings have interesting implications because they tend to suggest that human sexuality is rooted in biology and it manifests itself in some sort of a facial difference. Now the LGBT community is completely outraged, they're attacking the validity of the study and denouncing the professor and even Stanford University itself for pushing this sort of science. And that's for a good reason because there's 14 nations that have a death penalty for gay sex, many of them carrying that out. Countries like Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia and Somalia have been known to actually stone to death gay people. Imagine a regime getting their hands on this technology and maybe scouring the Facebook profiles of their population, having cameras in the airport to spot gay tourists entering the country, banning them, or targeting them. These are all pretty dark scenarios that are within the realm of possibility. And if that's not enough, the researcher behind this experiment, Michael Kaczynski, expects that in the near future, AI facial recognition will be able to correctly predict a person's religious beliefs, political stances, intelligence, and terrifyingly, even criminal predispositions. Imagine logging into your Tinder and buying a premium feature which lets you see the intelligence of the person that you're potentially going to date with. Imagine seeing how religious they are, whether they tend to be aggressive, or whatever other characteristics can be extracted using AI. Now this might seem absurd at first sight, but a study out of the University of Toronto tends to validate some of these ideas. What they've done is they've ran an experiment. They've taken two groups of people, one that come from a family making less than $60,000 a year annually, and another group which come from families that make over $100,000 a year annually. 
Then they had students trying to correctly guess whether a person came from a high income family or a low income family. The correct prediction rate was 53% which tend to suggest that, in fact, life experiences do alter our face shapes and leave their imprint on the way our faces look. There's no AI element to this study yet, but I'm willing to bet that when there is, we're going to see equally stunning results as in some of the previous cases we just went over. Now, I say all this not because I'm a fear mongerer and I want to instill fear in the advancement of technologies, quite the opposite, but I do think it's important that we address the negative sides of technologies equally as we do the positive ones. That was it for episode one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and like the Facebook page. Also, if you're into creative problem solving, whether it's for a startup idea that you have or you simply have a tough business challenge at work, make sure to check out rubikstoolkit.com. It's a brainstorming game that generates disruptive solutions. It is 100% free. That's R-U-B-I-X toolkit.com. The link is down below in the comments. I hope you enjoy it. Please make sure to try it out and let me know what you think. And stay tuned until next time.